Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 20. This tutorial will focus on applying the revaluation model for property, plant and equipment assets under IFRS. There are three learning objectives for this tutorial. First is to review the application of the revaluation model to property, plant and equipment or PPE assets under IFRS. Second, to review the correct treatment of revaluation gains, and third, to review the correct treatment of revaluation losses. This tutorial is based on the Uhura communications example, so please make sure you download the correct file and review the information and data before you proceed. This tutorial will deal with the first requirement, which is to use the information provided and to determine the balances for the Calgary building assets and revaluation surplus accounts, if any, for each year ended December 31st, 2020 through 2022. The first journal entry relates to the acquisition of the Calgary building on January 1st, 2020. So the journal entry is very simply to debit the building asset for Calgary for $6 million and credit cash $6 million. Now, as with the acquisition of any asset, we would have to calculate and record any depreciation expense. So that's what we're going to do. Once the building is acquired, we have to calculate depreciation expense. From the information, we are told that the building has a cost of $6 million and zero residual value, and the building has a lifespan of 20 years. If we take our cost minus residual divided by 20 years useful life, that gives us annual depreciation of $300,000. We put that into a journal entry at December 31st, 2020. Debit depreciation expense for $300,000. Credit accumulated depreciation for the Calgary building, $300,000. At the same time, I'm starting to build out two T accounts here, one for the cost and one for the accumulated depreciation. And we'll see how these accounts build and show at various points for revaluations the transfer from accumulated depreciation to the cost account. So if this were any normal situation where we acquired a building, we would continue to depreciate it year after year. However, what this example is trying to do is show us what happens when we have a change in the value of the asset itself. Once we hit a point where the actual market value or fair value of the building changes, we have some accounting to do. It's at that point, and the way this example is structured, at December 31st, 2020, there is a material change in the value of the building. The next step is going to be to transfer any accumulated depreciation balance from the accumulated depreciation account to the cost account. So that's the first thing that we do before determining what the revaluation is. That's an important step. Again, make sure that you transfer that $300,000 to the cost account. What that does is leaves a balance of zero in the accumulated depreciation account. The journal entry for that is simple. December 31st, debit the accumulated depreciation account for $300,000 and credit the building for $300,000. Once we've transferred the $300,000 from the accumulated depreciation to the cost account, we can now proceed with the third step, which is actually to adjust the cost account itself to what the market value of the building should be at the end of 2020. Based on the data provided, the balance or the fair market value of the building at December 31st should be $6,200,000. That becomes our desired ending balance. And then what we must do is basically calculate this $500,000 debit in the shaded blue box here. And that's the amount necessary to achieve an ending balance of $6.2 million. Because it's a debit, it's on the left side, that means that we have a revaluation gain. And of course, this makes sense because if we have a carrying value of the building of six million, less accumulated depreciation of 300,000, that leaves us a carrying value of 5,700,000. But the building is actually worth $6.2 million. That means we can add to it the $500,000 difference between the carrying value and the market value. So that's how we arrive at the $6.2 million fair value. That's accomplished through a very simple journal entry then is we're going to debit the building for 500,000 and we will now credit a new account here called revaluation surplus. 
The revaluation surplus is in other comprehensive income account. It's an OCI account, so that will get the credit of $500,000. Now, what we'll need to do is start keeping track of the accumulated balance in other comprehensive income, which hits the balance sheet. Remember that OCI accounts are closed to accumulated OCI or AOCI on the balance sheet. Once at the end of the year, the accounts are all closed, all the temporary accounts, the OCI account itself is temporary and then is closed to the permanent accumulated OCI account. At the end of December 31st, 2020, we have an asset with a $6.2 million market value. We have zero accumulated depreciation and a revaluation surplus account for $500,000. It's important to note that this revaluation surplus, this gain on the value of the building does not go to net income. Now we move on to the second year. So we end up going back to step one again and recalculating and recording depreciation, but now we have revised depreciation. A revised depreciation is based on the new cost amount of 6.2 million. The residual is still zero, and we have 19 years left because we have already depreciated one year. So 20 minus one is 19 years. Our new revised depreciation is 326316 so we create a journal entry for that. Of course, debit the expense and credit accumulated depreciation, and here's what we have going on. So our T accounts at this point, our cost has a balance of $6.2 million, accumulated depreciation now 326000 and the revaluation surplus, nothing's happened here yet, so it remains at 500000 then we would continue to depreciate the building normally until the next revaluation point or until at such time uh, that the fair market value of the building changes. In our example for Uhura Communications, it does change at the end of 2021. Prior to adjusting for any revaluation or change in value, we go back to that step two, which is to transfer the accumulated depreciation balance from the asset to the cost account. Because we started the, the year with the beginning balance at January 1st, 2021, zero, which was the ending balance at December 31st, 2020, we have one year's worth of depreciation, so that account accumulated only by one year's worth of depreciation. That 326316 must get transferred to the cost account. Through the same journal entry that we saw before, this time just dated December 31st, 2021. So debit accumulated depreciation for the Calgary building and credit the Calgary building asset for 326.316. The revaluation surplus balance doesn't change here at all. What this does is leaves us with a balance in the accumulated depreciation account of zero and results in a new carrying value in the asset. Now we would proceed with the next step, which would be to adjust the cost account to the new value. Up to this point of the transfer of the accumulated depreciation balance to the cost account, we now have a carrying value of $5,873,684. So that's just the $6.2 million less the accumulated depreciation. But the building has a fair value of $5.8 million at the end of the year. You can tell here that the carrying value is higher than what the fair value is at the end, and therefore the adjustment necessary to bring the account from a carrying value of 5,873,684 to 5.8 million even is now to have a credit of 73,684. And this is a revaluation loss. This is the part that's very important, is how to journalize this. The easiest part is to deal with the credit first. So we will credit the Calgary building for $73,684. But the question is, where do we put the debit? Now, we must first look to see if there is an existing balance in the revaluation surplus account. If there is, that is where we apply the debit for the adjustment to fair value, okay? So if there is an existing balance, we would debit the revaluation surplus OCI, which then is closed to the accumulated account. And that's where this debit here comes from. If there is no balance in the revaluation surplus account, then this would go to uh, an income statement account. But because there is a balance in the revaluation surplus, we must apply it here first to accumulated OCI. The result then at the end of all these adjustments is a carrying value of 5.8 million, 
so a debit balance in the asset account, accumulated depreciation of zero, and now we have a remaining revaluation surplus balance of 426316 and this would carry forward for any future revaluation losses could be applied against. And then once we have revised the value of the building at the end of 2021, we go through our process again. So we could say that we would go through step one to recalculate the revised depreciation for 2022. Now we have a cost of value of 5.8 million. The residual is still zero, and now there are 18 years remaining, which was 20 minus two years that have passed. Our new depreciation, 322,222, and the journal entry debit depreciation expense, 322, 222, and credit the accumulated depreciation for the building, 322, 222. The second step again would be to check to see if there is any revaluation at the end of 2022. There is. The data tells us that the value of the building changes again. In keeping with proper procedure, we must then transfer any accumulated depreciation uh, that has built up since the last revaluation. So 322222 is transferred to the cost account with the debit to the accumulated depreciation account and credit to the building. And then finally, we have to go through and record any journal entries to adjust our balances and record any revaluation gains or losses. What we did here is made the ending balance of the building sufficiently large so that it actually results in using up the revaluation gain balance that carries forward and then applying the rest to the revaluation loss account. First things first is we need to go from a balance of 5.8 million down to $5 million. So we take our desired ending balance of 5 million plus 322,222 minus 5,800,000 5, gives us a credit necessary of 477,778 and that's the revaluation loss in 2022. We're going to credit the building for 477,778. Here's where we have to be very careful. We have to first look and see if there's any balance to use up in the, in the revaluation surplus account and there is but there's only 426,316. And this amount, 477, is larger. We can only use up 426,316, and so that's what this debit here is for. And then the leftover amount to make the debits equal credits in our journal entry is going to go straight to the income statement, 51,462. What this does is prevents us from going into a negative or a debit balance in the revaluation surplus account. We can never have a debit balance in revaluation surplus. Now we will start with requirement two, and this is to do the same thing as requirement one, except for the Edmonton building asset and revaluation surplus accounts. For the same period, the years ended December 31st, 2020 through 2022. We record the acquisition of the building, debit the building 12 million, credit cash 12 million. And then we go through our first step, which is to calculate and record any depreciation expense. The building cost is 12 million, the residual value is zero, and this one also has a 20 year life, so 600,000 in annual depreciation, debit the expense and credit accumulated depreciation, and we have completed that requirement. And then, because there is a change in value at the end of 2020, we transfer the, the accumulated depreciation that has built up in the account for the Edmonton building of 600000 So we'll transfer that over to the cost account. Debit accumulated depreciation for 600000 and credit the building account for 600000 Again, with the third step is to adjust the cost account and record any revaluation gain or loss. Where this example is a little bit different is right off the bat, we have the building drop in value. The Calgary building went up in value when it was acquired to the end, so we had a revaluation surplus. In this case, it doesn't. We drop from 12 million to 11. We've already transferred the 600,000 in accumulated depreciation, so there is a remaining amount here that needs to be credited to the account, and that's the revaluation loss. The journal entry for that is, of course, to credit the building for $400,000. Notice that what we're going to debit is the revaluation loss account on the income statement, also for $400,000. Down here, uh, I'm showing a T account, but this is a memorandum account. This account does actually not exist on the balance sheet, but 
we're keeping track of it because IFRS allows us to recover previous revaluation losses on the income statement. So we want to keep track of this amount to see that if, if the building increases in value later, that we can recover some or all of this revaluation loss. Once we have transferred the balances and made our adjustments, we then start the next year with revised depreciation expense calculation. So now our building has an $11 million value, no residual, 19 years remaining, 578947 in revised annual depreciation. So credit the accumulated depreciation account and debit the depreciation expense. Then we look to see if there is a revaluation necessary at the end of 2021. There is, so we will transfer any accumulated balance from the accumulated depreciation account to the cost account. So we take this 478, 947, move it over. So debit accumulated depreciation, credit the building. And then we go through to adjust what the ending balance needs to be. At the end of 2021, the building drops in value uh, again to 10,500,000. However, because the revised depreciation actually resulted in the carrying value of the building to be less than 10,500,000, we can adjust the cost account so that we have the correct ending balance. So in this case, we have a revaluation gain of 78,947. The journal entry is to debit the building account for 78,947. Because we have a gain this time, we first check to see if there are any previous losses that we want to recover. There is. So we're going to credit the revaluation loss account on the income statement for 78,947, leaving us with 321,053 to carry forward to see if we can recover in the future. If there was no existing balance in the revaluation loss memo account, then we would do what uh, happened with the Calgary building is credit the revaluation surplus account. And once again, we go through the process of calculating and recording revised depreciation. The balance in the building account is 10,500,000, zero residual, 18 years left, giving us depreciation of 583,3333, and the journal entry to record it. Debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation for 583,000. 333 on December 31st, 2022. Once again, in the second step, we need to check to see if there is a revaluation, if the value of the building changes at the end of 2022. It does, so we have to transfer the accumulated depreciation balance of 583.333 to the cost account. So debit accumulated depreciation, credit the cost of the Edmonton building. So once we've transferred the balance from the accumulated depreciation account to the cost account, we must now go ahead and adjust the cost account to achieve the desired ending balance. So the data tells us that the value of the Edmonton building at the end of December 2022 is 11,500,000, which means that the carrying value of the building prior to the revaluation is 9,916,000. 667 and so to go from 9.9 million to 11 million 500,000 we need a revaluation gain a debit to that account we start to build out our journal entry debit the building for 1,583,333 now we have to be careful of what to do with the credit for that keeping track of the memorandum account says that okay right now the balance in the memo account for the revaluation losses is 321,053. This adjustment is bigger than that, so I'm going to have to use this all up and still have some leftover. The first part of the credit to this journal entry is to the revaluation loss to use up the rest of the remaining balance. And then whatever is left over, the residual amount of that journal entry, in this case 1,262,280, will go to the revaluation surplus account. As we had seen with the first part of the tutorial, when we had no losses to begin with and revaluation gains, we started building out a revaluation surplus account. So that's where this will go. All the heavy lifting is done now. And what we can see or, or display is what all the final balances in our associated T accounts for the Edmonton building are. We have a ending balance in the cost account for the building of 11,500,000.
We have an ending balance of zero in the accumulated depreciation. We have a zero balance in the uh, revaluation loss memo account because we use them all up. And based on the journal entry from the previous slide, we now have a new balance starting in this revaluation surplus account in accumulated OCI of the million two sixty two two eighty. And this process would keep going over and over again for as long as we own the building. Now let's sum up with some points to remember. Revaluation gains are booked to the revaluation surplus account as we have seen. It's an OCI account, not an income statement account, and that forms part of total comprehensive income on the statement of comprehensive income. And from what we know of the accounting cycle, of course, OCI is closed out to accumulated OCI, which is the balance sheet equity account, and that happens at the end of the year. What we must do is ensure that any prior revaluation losses are booked to revaluation loss on the income statement that are related to that asset, so we don't mix up assets. And we do that first with any excess booked to revaluation surplus. If no previous losses exist, the entire gain is booked to the revaluation surplus account, which is what we saw first with the Calgary building, which is then closed to accumulated OCI. And that balance will continue to grow until we offset it by any revaluation losses. And that was the last revaluation we saw with the Calgary example. We had a couple of years of revaluation gains and there was a loss. When it comes to revaluation losses, those are booked to the revaluation loss account on the income statement. But before that happens, we have to ensure that any prior revaluation gains in the revaluation surplus on the balance sheet in that OCI account that are related to that asset are reversed first. So we'll take the revaluation loss, look to see if there's a balance in the revaluation surplus, and use that up first, then apply the excess to the revaluation loss on the income statement. If no previous surpluses exist, then the entire loss is booked to the revaluation loss account. This concludes tutorial 20 on the revaluation model for property, plant, and equipment assets under IFRS 2021-2022.